Hi everyone, welcome to this lesson today where we are discussing inequalities in two triangles. Now in the previous lesson, we were only talking about inequalities within one triangle and making comparisons about sides and angles. And now we're actually gonna talk about two triangles and compare sides and angles and then set up an inequality between the two. We have what's called the hinge theorem. Now the hinge theorem, and I'm just gonna zoom my screen out just a smidge. The hinge theorem states that if I've got two sets of congruent sides, so side CA is congruent to side FD, side CB is congruent to side FE, and I have an inequality about an angle, the included angle, that angle C is greater than the measure of angle F, well, I would then be able to say, since I've got two triangles that have two sets of congruent sides and the included angle, I have an inequality relationship about that. Then the side opposite the bigger angle, which is AB, is going to be greater than the side opposite the smaller angle, which is angle F, which is opposite the side of DE. It's called the hinge theorem, and you basically have to think about it almost like a door. If I've got a side and a door, and I open up the door, the door and the side don't change in their size, right? They're always the same size no matter how big or small the door is opened, however big that angle is. So if I have a door that's open this much with my side of my wall and that angle, look at the lengths of my fingertips, right? That distance. But if I open the door more, then obviously the distance between my fingertips is much greater. So then this angle is less than this angle. So therefore this side, my fingertips, is less than the distance between my fingertips here. The converse is also true. So if I have two sets of sides that are congruent, so if side CA is congruent to side FD and side CB is congruent to side FE, and I give you this information that side AB is greater than side DE, and I'm just gonna put numbers there to kind of mark it as, hey, well, AB is definitely greater than DE. Well, then I'm gonna be able to say for a fact that the opposite angles have that inequality relationship, that the measure of angle C must be greater than the measure of angle F, and it's the same idea. It's kind of like this door and the wall is opened up greater, which means that angle C is greater than, if it, the distance is only seven, then that means that this little angle here has to be smaller. So here, if I was to give you this, these diagrams and I wanted you to make an inequality statement based on these diagrams, and I'm just going to zoom my screen in a little bit more. So if I looked at this diagram here and I wanted to be able to say something about it, well, I see these two separate triangles. They both have a side of 15. They both share a common side, JL, but I see that the angle measures here are different. So the angle measures of 40 and 25, well, 40 is definitely greater than 25. So the side length of KL is definitely going to be greater than the side length of LM. And I'd be able to say that because I've got two pairs of congruent sides, 15 and side JL, 15 and side JL, and then my opposite angles are directly opposite from the sides that I can make that inequality statement. And of course, I can say the opposite. LM is less than KL. If I have these two triangles here, I see I have two sets of sides that are definitely marked congruent. I have two angle measures that are the included angle, the angle that's in between the two sets of congruent sides. However, I can clearly see the angles have different measures. Then the side opposite the 57 is definitely greater than the side opposite the 32. So I would be able to say that AC is greater than ED, or of course I could say ED is less than AC. So now range. So now finding the range of a value, and this happens when we have a variable, and we have to be able to say, you know, what could possibly be the value for x? There's two different types of problems that we might have here. Now in this first problem, it's called range, I just refer to it as range part one. These are a little bit easier to do. Here I have a set of congruent sides, a shared side. So these two triangles have two sets of congruent angles, Theref I'm sorry, sides, therefore the opposite angles I can make an inequality statement about. I could say that x plus five is greater than 18. And if I have x plus five is greater than 18, I can easily solve for x. And it's just saying x has to be some value greater than 13. I don't know anything else other than it just being greater than 13. So then if I give you some examples for that and I say, um, actually, these are examples from the previous um, problem. I need to just go back to that. So 15 and 25, 15 and 25, 35 is greater than 30. 
So I would be able to say that the measure of angle C is greater than the measure of angle F or the opposite. And then this one, sorry that I missed this before, guys. I have two pairs of congruent sides. Then I can compare these sides. So the, so the angle opposite 22.5 is greater than the angle opposite of 21.7. So angle JLM is definitely greater than angle JLK. Okay, so that just goes along with comparing sides to angles. But let's get back now into a range type problem. So here I have two triangles that have two pairs of congruent sides. So one side is marked, one side is in common. I definitely see that this length of 30 goes with 60 and 5x plus 8, I'm sorry, 5x minus 8 goes with 65. So I know that this 5x minus 8 is definitely greater than 30. Or I could say 30 is less than 5x minus 8 right? Because this side is, uh, this side is opposite the smaller angle. So if I go ahead and solve here, I would add eight on both sides, divide both sides by five, and that x value has to be something greater than 7.6. This one here, so I have 70 is across from x plus four. Um, I've got 50, uh, 65 degrees is across from 15. I've got two pairs of, you know, congruent sides, so I can make an assumption based on these angles. So therefore, 15 is across from the 65. So 15 must be less than the side opposite the 70. I would go ahead and solve, and I end up getting x is greater than 11. So those are range problems that are just really, really friendly for us. And notice all the answers have been x is greater than, x is greater than. But now we're going to take a look at what happens when we're dealing with a range problem that ends up being a little different. So over here, range part two. So first of all, um, I see I'm given the sides instead. So I'm given four and 6.3. So I can make the uh, inference that this angle here is less than 60. So X plus five is going to be less than 60, right? Because the side four is less than 6.3. I'm gonna go ahead and solve that. And what I'm gonna end up getting is X is less than 55. And that seems fine, but then think about that. I'm kind of opening myself up to zero right? X is less than zero. X could be zero. X could be negative 14. So I basically have to set my minimum range. Before it was X is greater and kind of the sky was the limit in that case. But now if I'm saying the X value has to be less, I have to make sure I establish my minimum boundary. So what I have to be able to say is, well, that x plus 5, this angle, whatever that angle is, definitely needs to be greater than 0, right? That angle needs to be greater than 0. That angle can't be equal to 0. It can't be negative. Um, I have to make sure that whatever that angle is, is definitely greater than 0. And that would be the second inequality that I would set up. And when I solve for that, I get x is greater than negative 5. And then my compound inequality statement, remember we start with a smaller value. So instead of saying x is greater than negative 5, it becomes negative 5 is less than x. And then I attach that onto my other inequality, x is less than 55. So now think about it for a moment. Let me find a negative number in here that actually works. What if I said x was negative 3, right? If I plug in a negative 3 for x, negative 3 plus 5 is 2. And you can have an angle of 2. Okay, if I found an x value here of 10 and I plugged it in, 10 plus 5 is 15, you can definitely have an angle of 15. So we have to set those, um, different, th those lower limits in these types of problems. So now let's take a look. We're going to have that case here. So first of all, I'm comparing the sides and I have my angles. So the 2x minus 5 is definitely less than 70 because it's across from 8.5 and 9.1. So I'm going to go ahead and solve for x. I get this x is less than 37.5, which is great. But now I need to make sure that I don't go for an x value that's like at negative 200, because I don't know if that's going to give me a proper angle. So I have to make sure that this angle here is definitely greater than 0. So I have to set 2x minus 5 greater than 0. Solve for x. And then I can set up that compound inequality. So it's 2.5 is less than x is less than 37.5. So again, notice I'm setting up my original inequality just like we did before. But then if I'm getting x is less than, I need to make sure that I make sure that angle is definitely greater than zero. Excuse me. 
Last one here. So 3x plus 2 is across from the 65. 17 is across from 70. So that 3x plus 2 is definitely less than 17. We're going to go ahead, solve. We get x is less than 5. But what we're seeing here is that we are talking about it being a side length. And a side length always has to be a positive number. It can't be 0. It's got to be something greater than 0. So I know that 3x plus 2 definitely has to still be greater than 0, even though it's a side and it's not an angle. And if I go ahead and solve, I get negative 2 thirds. So negative 2 thirds is less than x, which is less than 5. And that sums that up. So now a couple of proofs. Here this proof says, given D is the midpoint of segment AC and the measure of angle 1 is greater than the measure of angle 2, prove that BA is greater than BC. So basically what I need to make sure I do is, of course, state my given. D is the midpoint. Now remember, every time you've been told that there is a midpoint, we are then able to say that those two segments are congruent because of the definition of a midpoint. So AD is congruent to CD. We also can see in this triangle, well, hey, the two separate triangles share a common side of BD. BD is congruent to BD, and that's my reflexive property. So now I've got two pairs of sides that are congruent. I'm told that the measure of angle 1 is definitely bigger than the measure of angle 2. So therefore, now that's enough information to say, well, then BA, that side is definitely greater than BC, and that's because of your hinge theorem. So when you go from talking about angles to sides, that is your hinge theorem. Let's take a look at this proof. Given AB is congruent to DE, I'm sorry, given AB is equal to DE, and BE is greater than AD. So BE is greater than AD. Now this looks like a pretty confusing diagram, like what am I looking at? There's so many different triangles here. But look at what we're trying to prove. We're trying to prove that the measure of angle CAE is greater than the measure of angle CEA. Okay, so we're trying to make that statement. So right now we're given AB, segment AB is equal to the measure of segment DE, and that BE is greater than AAD. Okay, so we have to use that information, right? So if BE is greater than AD, now think about it. You've got these two kind of skinny triangles that share a side of EA, that kind of overlap each other. So then because of that, okay, well, first of all, we could say segment AB is congruent to segment DE, just definition of congruent segments. We can also see that AE is congruent to itself because of our reflexive property. So now really look at the triangles that we are given, right? We've got this triangle here, two sets of congruent sides marked up. We've got this triangle here, two sets of congruent sides marked up. And it says CAE, so this angle here is greater than CEA, this angle here, right? And notice it's because this angle is opposite of BE and this angle here is opposite of DA or AD rather. Then because we're going from sides to angles, we can say that the measure of angle CAE is greater than the measure of angle CEA, and that's the converse. So converse goes from talking about the sides to the angles, whereas the regular hinge theorem goes from angles to sides. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know there's a lot of information here, especially in this last proof. Uh, please rewatch if you need to. Thanks for watching. Bye.